is the Flabbergasted Podcast, where we just can't believe you haven't seen it. Every episode, we discuss a movie that one of us has seen and the other hasn't. Follow us on Instagram at FlabberPod and subscribe in your podcast app of choice. I'm your host, Rogi. Let's get to it. This day, we are discussing the 1982 Harrison Ford film Blade Runner. Blade Runner was directed by Ridley Scott um, and is about a Blade Runner who must pursue and terminate four replicants who stole a ship in space and have returned to Earth to find their creator. We love a synopsis that only makes sense after you've seen the movie because it does not explain what a Blade Runner or replicant, or replicant are. Is. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> not that I, the movie explains it very much either or I have a great understanding of what yes. those things are. One of my questions is, where does, why is it Blade Runner? Why is that the title? Why yeah. is it not called no, Replicant? No, no oh, why, why? is that the name of that yeah, job? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand this that. This has got to be based on a novel. I think it's based it on a novel by Philip, Philip K. Dick. K. Dick. Yep. Okay. So it's an adaptation situation. Probably makes more sense if you read the book. Books are usually better. So I had never seen Blade Runner. I, like my wife used to get it confused with Blade, the Wesley Snipes. Yes. Marvel adaptation from like the late 90s. Blade is definitely a Marvel character. Yeah, and it's definitely Wesley Snipes. Okay. But I don't know if it's, if that was a Marvel, like, like it's, it's a Marvel MCU. property, but I don't know that mm-hmm. it was like a Marvel Studios film. No, I don't think so. I think it's kind of like. They gave the rights for the movie yeah. to a studio. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That. Like the David Hasselhoff Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. directed TV film from like 1996. That's kind of what I was wondering. Yeah. yeah. Though it's better regarded, right? I, I have not seen it. Very different than Blade Runner. Blade. Yeah. Oh, yeah. sure. Yeah. I couldn't tell you I've not seen it. Why have you not seen Blade Runner? I don't know because this is a movie. I have to say I'm a fan of sci-fi movies and you, you all listening to this podcast are going to be like, are you, are you really Jessica? But I am except apparently not always. So I don't know. I'm not the last two sci-fi. Yeah. I tend to really like a good science fiction. I like the, I'm okay with fantasy, but I I tend to want to watch them and sometimes then I do and I'm like, yeah, no, I didn't I didn't love it. And I don't know if that's something that's changed over time because this is definitely something I feel like my brother and I used to watch more sci-fi type movies. And so I don't know if I just did that because I was with him and we would we were together or if I really liked them for me, but I do like them. And I don't know if it's like I've gotten older and I'm like, well, the technology's not there. Well, I don't there. think I don't that know. what you didn't like about this film had anything to do with it being sci-fi. I don't think that was the problem because it's not really a sign. I mean, he they're in a f- police car that can fly at one point. Right. But there's n- at really no point the entire time does it matter that it's set in the future, which is now our past. It's not Sci- it does. It doesn't have plot devices that are that hinge on being sci-fi elements. It's about basically a bounty hunter who has to track down four people that essentially act like people the whole time he's tracking them down. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I just don't know that. I feel like this is like one of the classic, and I'm saying that with like the air quotes, the classic '80s sci-fi type movie. So I don't know, like maybe. how maybe like in my head I've defined that differently. I'm curious. I'm just thinking of Star Wars as like a classic sci-fi, like it's in space and there are lasers yeah. being shot. And this one, he's using a regular a gun. A regular gun. They're, he's using regular old like, and he's I guess he has a voice activated enhance zoom in. Oh my, which is the thing. worst thing it was, in the world. It was so weird, and it took so long. I don't. There's got to be skill behind learning how to use that tool when he's like quadrant, whatever. He's just dropping numbers for the quadrants. Yeah, like, okay, interesting. But before we get too far off of the main information here, this is my director. Ridley Scott. That I am not usually a fan of. Really? You didn't like The Martian? I loved The Martian. Okay. I loved Gladiator. Didn't love Gladiator. Really liked it. Didn't love Gladiator? I, I feel like love is high. I liked it. It was good. 
Yeah. I will watch The Martian anytime it's on TV. I will not watch The Glad- Gladiator anytime it's on TV. Okay. But for whatever reason, I see his name and basically there's a, a particular movie and I don't want to say anything just in case Alien. you record it that I did not love. Alien? It was an alien. I'm out of Ridley Scott movies that I know are Ridley Scott movies off the top of my head. Keep talking while I look and up Ridley Scott movies. And now when I see his name, I'm like, ugh, I'm going to hate that. I think he did one called Solaris too, but. Oh, even Soderbergh. So it wasn't him. You don't like Steven Soderbergh no, no, no. films? I mean, I didn't like You don't that like film. Ocean's Eleven? I do like Ocean's Eleven. I just didn't like that one film. Okay, back in it. Ridley Scott. Don't blame Ridley Scott for directing a movie that he didn't direct. Yes. So that's my bad. But I did look up his movies last night and I was like, I like a lot of these, but some of them I just really hate. And so maybe it's not Ridley Scott. Maybe it's the writers. Hannibal. I didn't see that one. 2001. The the sequel to Silence of the Lambs. Have you seen Silence of the Lambs? Oh, it was a really, really, really long time ago. Yes, we should do Silence of the Lambs. Have you seen that one? Yeah, I've seen it. Okay, we'll do that. I mean, it was 12 years ago, but I've seen it. I mean, I was like... I've not seen Black Hawk Down. I've not seen American Gangster. Is that with Denzel Washington? I think American... Oh, I don't know. I thought... No, I was thinking of the one... on it. It's called Hustle. American Hustle, maybe? Mm, That is different. It does start Denzel Washington. These are a lot of Russell Crowe films. A lot of Russell Crowe and Ridley Scott productions. I feel like in my moment of reflection, maybe I've been a little harsh towards director Ridley Scott. The 2010 Robin Hood, where Russell Crowe is an old Robin Hood? It's Prometheus. Prometheus is the movie that I hate. Is that a Ridley Scott movie? Yes, and it's an alien franchise movie. Okay, well, we should do it because you hate it. I can't. I don't know. Well, we can talk about it, but I was really curious about this movie because it was a Ridley Scott movie, and I tend, in my head... (laughs) And I I forgot that I don't hate him. (laughs) Well, yeah, because every time I see his name, I think, oh, I don't want to watch that. I'm sure that always helps your enjoyment of the film that you're about to go into. I think it was such This is like Rachel insisting she hates pepper, even though she wouldn't notice if you put a little bit of pepper in her spaghetti sauce. I think it's just the really strong feelings that I don't like Prometheus. And so now I'm like, (laughs) how can anything you do be good? And then I remembered, or I was told that he directed The Martian, and I was like, foiled! Because I can't have that opinion if I like both, if I like The Martian so much. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just a good reminder that everyone contains multitudes, and Spielberg has flops, and everyone does, you know? I mean, I don't Except even think Leo those DiCaprio. movies are flops. They're just ones that I don't like. Leo DiCaprio doesn't really have flops. Everyone else does. So we got to talk immediately about the lighting in Blade Runner. It's so dark. It's so dark. Yeah, which is I intentional. hate that. It's, you know, it's trying to do the shadows thing. But it leads to the broader question, which is not explained in the movie. Maybe it is in the book. Why is there no sunlight? Yeah. Follow up question. How is there no sunlight? Like, what does, how do, how does mankind survive? I feel like this is like us watching. Ghostbusters. No, the Hugh Jackman movie we were just talking about last night. Remembrance, colon, Miami. I'm like, we didn't hear about any of this stuff. Right. We don't know why the world looks the way it does. It's unclear. How are their crops growing? How are we feeding people? Why are we having flying cars? In 2019, and where are my freaking flying cars? Do they do all of the farming on other planets and then ship food back to Earth? Is it only poor people that still live on Earth? Poor slash disabled people. I got the impression that that was the case a little bit. Why are there slaves? I heard I got slaves mining, but I don't understand that concept. The Tyrell Corporation made replicants to work as laborers in the off-world in the like terraforming, um, but what are fighting we getting battles. from that? I think those. I think they make two million replicants. They send them to Mars. They can dig up all of the stuff and build the infrastructure and get it ready for the human people to go to. Oh, and you think like we're we basically colonized it and we're living there? Yes, I mean they. It references the outer planets a few times, but yeah, I don't know why. So Earth is just sort of dumpy then. Yeah, I think Earth because the guy. J.F. Sullivan said that, that's not his name, J.F. Sebastian said that he d- he couldn't get medically cleared to, to go, go off-world, off-world because of I his heard, genetic yeah. disorder. Yeah. Which was unnecessary. Like, he just looked like a normal guy. A normal, super creepy guy. 
with very weird habits and pastimes. Was he not a replicant? No, no, no. He Why worked. Was he was a genetic he was. engineer that worked on replicants. Okay. I'm talking about the creepy guy that they duped into taking him yeah, to the, the CEO's chess house. Guy. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The clownsman. I wonder why I was thinking he was. Yeah, I don't know. I I don't I don't know. They did they I they left a lot of holes. There's a lot of holes. And they didn't tell us anything about it and I was having a really hard time just accepting it and moving on. Yeah, this is a movie that makes me wonder like if I'm watching movies wrong or makes me feel like am I not watching them intelligently enough? Because, like, it's okay for there to be holes. Like, not everything has to be explained. A movie's, like, telling a story. You know, it, it's what it's what is is it about. But if the holes are so big that they're hindering my um, suspension of disbelief yes. that I can't get over them, which I don't think was the case here. I accepted. I wasn't, like, dwelling the whole time. Other than, why is it dark all the time? I and why was is it definitely raining all the time? dwelling. I'm like, I, I don't understand this. I could have gotten a this. little bit of exposition as to why it was dark and rainy all the time. But besides that, I more just didn't understand the plot didn't like gri- grip me very much. Agree. We have, so it, we open with a replicant, which is like a person, ro- a robot that looks so much like a person, they have to give them an entire like Turing test to figure out if they are a person or not. Yes, which I find very interesting mm-hmm. that they always refer to this test and they say, Please answer the question. We're going to ask you a question. But how many questions do they actually ask? No questions. There no were questions. no questions. They're just statements. Statements to react to. Yeah. And it's about how their irises or like their pupils were dilating or yeah. something. I'm like, that's ridiculous. So did you know that the very first guy was going to be a replicant? Like, why would they have shown us the test if that very first one where they did it off world or no, they yeah. did it at the Tyrell Corporation and... Louis or whatever his name was. Leon. Leon was getting interviewed. And the questions are all about like testing empathy and recall and memory. Yeah, I kind of thought he was because like you said, why would he show us this? But I also thought this guy is getting really wound up. Like this is a very awkward interaction. Stressful. Like they just dropped you into this. Mm -hmm. Like I guess they did write the little thing. They did the Star Wars scroll. Yeah. Yeah but I don't feel like it put you in the right setting for it. And then they just drop you into this interview room and then he pulls a gun out of, I don't know where who knows and shoots the guy just shoots him. Like he's in, he flies backwards really farther back than I think of people flying when they get shot. Yeah. Agree. They're like a super powerful gun or something like a, yeah, big shotgun of some kind, not a handgun. So immediately my gut reaction is to be like, okay, this corporation is evil. A big corporation in a dystopian tech future, the corporation is bad. And I'm annoyed that the corporation is the one that gets to interrogate everyone. Right? It's a guy at the corporation was doing the void conf test. Yes. So it's like you get to be judge, jury, and executioner for the things that you created. You created. Cool. Right. But then later it's Harrison Ford doing it and he's doing it in the capacity of a police officer, even though he doesn't work as a police officer anymore. Well, and they said the chief of police or whatever you want to call him. He had a weird him, voice. He was a weird dude. He said that he sent the, the other original detect- interrogator yeah. over there. Yeah. So he wasn't actually part of the corporation. But yeah, it, that was the whole thing was weird. And also, this is when I no- started noticing, which I always notice, but the smoking. So much smoking in this movie. Really? I did not notice that much smoking. I noticed some smoking, but not that much. I just feel like they were smoking a lot. And I wonder if that was. I think it's that my brain has been destroyed by the um, Peaky Blinders where they're truly constantly smoking and drinking. Yeah. So this is just like, I didn't even notice it. You just, yeah. Yeah. Could it's be. totally, I've been disenchanted about that. So they arrest Harrison Ford to get him to go to the police station and then tell him that he has to do this job for them. And, and then he, has he no tries choice. to walk out. Yeah. And the guy's like, no, you you really have to. You don't yeah. have a choice. And I'm like, why doesn't he have a choice? What yeah. don't I know that happened I don't here? I don't You're understand calling why. in a favor. What's going on? Is, are you threatening him? Was he, I feel like he was probably, he said, well, you're out there. So you're a little guy now and we're big guys or something. Harrison Ford yeah. turns around like, okay, well, I guess I'm doing this then. I don't know what that means. Didn't understand Also that. don't know why the guy's creating little origami creatures. Do not understand origami guy. I have him as origami guy. He is in the back. He stands behind Harrison Ford, taps him with a cane, makes origami out of a matchstick or a piece of paper yeah. or whatever. That's all he does. 
don't I understand don't, what's happening. I don't happening. know what he's doing. Me neither. He has like a few lines because he shows up at Very the end. Very few. At first, you're like, he only speaks Chinese or something. I thought it was in Tokyo. Rachel said it was set in San Francisco. I What's the point in San Francisco if there's going to be no hills? Don't remember that. What are we doing? Yeah, I don't know. Um, so the lighting's insane. I think, I think it's like it's visually arresting. Like I don't know that it's ugly or like awful, but they don't care about colors. I mean, it it's, it's almost help black me and white. Want to watch the movie? Yeah. Well, it's because you've got like millennial. Everything needs to be fun and happy and bright and fast brain. Why okay isn't the song syncing up with the gun being cocked and shot? <laughs> yeah. Right. I want dope. You want it's dopamine well, brain. I'm like, if you are going to show me something that you want me to see, you have to at least light the screen enough that I can see it. Yeah. It's like the new Batman movie with Robert Pattinson. I haven't seen it. Okay, it's just really dark the whole time. And listen, yeah. I like a dark Batman. I like a grungy Batman. But I want to be able to see what Batman is doing or how else am I supposed to get excited when he's kicking bad guys' butts? Like It's unclear. I don't I can't if I can't see it, I cannot Rachel. be invested. So then you get the you get kind of a cool shot of Glasses Guy, aka Mr. Dr. Tyrell. Who there's like a lot of sunlight playing off of his glasses yeah. when they're looking at him. That his glasses cool. looked like weird bifocals. Mm-hmm. Like he had like trifocals. The light was playing almost. in it really yeah. hard. Yeah. The they talk about okay, here's the people you're tracking down, replicants you're tracking down. There's um head replicant who's good at fighting. There's um girl replicant who's good at fighting. There's Leon who's strong. Mm-hmm. And then there's pleasure droid replicant. Well, there were two girls and two guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So one of the girls was made like for as what did I have? A Companion. pleasure model for like remote military outposts. Standard issue. Yeah. It's like that's disgusting. Yeah. Disgusting. And then they put these. Four, the, so the whole crux of the movie is they have these four year lifespans. Yes. And the replicants find that out and they get mad about it. And want yeah. to go to the root of the problem to fix to, it. To get more life. Mm hmm. Um, Which how, I think that would have been an interesting story. How do they find out that they're going to die and for mm-hmm. or die, whatever, however you want to define it, stop? He, they didn't existing. know it was four years. They had to get Harrison Ford to confirm it, but they yeah. knew that it was that it was limited. So how you know how did they find that yeah. out originally to kick them off into this whole yeah. idea that they were going to escape to Earth to find their creator? It's your classic AI that got too smart yep. and become self aware sort of story. I think. And then I almost don't even know where to go from here. Okay, well, how do we feel about super about short haired Han Solo? Harrison Ford with short hair here. How do we feel about it? Yeah, I like Harrison Ford with any hair. What about no hair? Sure. Gray hair? Yep. Um, from the Jason Siegel TV show that he's in right yep. now. Shrinking. Shrinking. I like Harrison Ford mm-hmm. in almost everything I've ever seen him in. Mm-hmm. Well. Except yeah. this. Unpopular opinion, right? Hot take, Harrison Ford, you know, a good movie star. And I won't say that he's bad in this. I just didn't like the movie. Do you know what I mean? So never comes up. I don't understand origami guy. Something I, I love about, sorry, something mm-hmm. I love about it is the brands that they decide to highlight mm-hmm. in Are movies still like brands. this. Yeah. Well, Coca Cola is, but mm-hmm. Pan Am is not. True. Atari, I also yeah. saw. Mm-hmm. So I find that, I always find that interesting. And I kind of wonder if it's a, like at the time, was that brand big enough and they were thinking this will, you know, this will age well with that brand yeah. or were they thinking it doesn't matter. These are big brands. We're just throwing them out there. Yeah. Or are they trying to make a time capsule of their time and then project the yeah. moment they were in 40 years in the future? Yeah. Yeah. I, don't know. I, I always think that's very interesting. So, but I did notice the Coca-Cola and the Pan Am specifically, mm-hmm. but yes, continue with what you were going to say. Um, I do. Once you got, once I realized that, okay, we've got Harrison Ford trying to track them down on one track. And then the other track is these guys who have come to earth attempting to, well, I thought at one point that their whole goal was to just get the answers to the tests. Cause they start asking someone, what are the answers to the test? They start an, an asking, um, ice man, ice scientist. What are the answers? Give me the answers. He says, I don't have the answers. You got to go to Dr. Tyrell. You got to go through J.P. Morgan. J.R. Smith. Schuster. Mm -hmm. It's J.R. Schuster for sure. It's J.F. Sebastian. Oh, that's it. 
Um, JF Sebastian. I have no, like, I didn't follow that at all. Here's my problem. If you have robots, what was their deal? They're, are they super strong? Kind of. Yes. Not too strong but, to before getting killed by Harrison Ford, mostly. And not, like, the one guy crushed Terrell's head. Mostly his girl, eyes. The girls both had Harrison Ford dead to rights and didn't kill him. Yeah, Why? Exactly. That's one of my last notes. Why? She had him by the nostrils and couldn't yeah. do anything, which was like kind of an, like a weird erotic sort of crush between her thighs sort of pose. Was yeah. Daryl Hannah like a, a um, WWE female wrestler or something? Her main thing was she did a lot of backflips. I don't know a that. I'm going to look with it up one R. Because I, I did have to look up the... So, yeah, I don't understand. You had them one time that he stuck his hand in the cold juice. And then one time they stuck his hand in the boiling egg column. And those are the only two robot things they did. He stuck a nail through his hand for no reason. Do we want to skip to I the end for just a second? I didn't understand that at all. Like, why the last did 15 he minutes that? of the movie didn't make any sense. Harrison Ford uh, gets, he punches through the wall, grabs his Harrison Ford's wrist, breaks, breaks his, his fingers. fingers, gives him the gun back. Harrison Ford just gets scared and runs away by climbing through the roof, the ceiling yeah. of this giant abandoned apartment building that only creepy clown genetic engineer lives in. Yes. He, there's no way he can kill Roy. Who's just messing with him and like Who's, has is going no like, clothes do, 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 do. on now? Like except he's just for some like boxer speaking brief in things. weird poetry. Yeah, and then he gets up to the top, saves Harrison Ford's life, and dies. I don't know why he saved his life. Me neither. Um, I know why he died. It was his four years or whatever. But I'm looking in here and I don't see anything that shows that she was some type of an athlete, gymnast type person. So maybe it was a stunt double that was doing the backflips or something. Yeah, but I don't understand what that was bringing to that character in particular, except just making it more interesting. It's like, I assumed it was like an impressive athletic feat that humans couldn't have done. It had to be a robot thing. It had to be a replicant thing. Although I don't know why she had him right there and then she runs back to do the tumble pass and then... Why do the replicants bleed? They put blood in them to make it more realistic? So they wouldn't know they were replicants? Which seems problematic if they are trying to understand yeah. what's... Why make them hyper-realistic if they're not going to be used almost primarily as sex slaves? Which I'm not condoning by any means. Right. I, it, the logic just is I understand not... understand we don't leave them as... You're just putting extra cash into making them, giving them like skin and stuff instead of just leaving them as like silver robot. Then you can tell, boom, that one's a replicant. Yeah. It's going to make it easier to track him down. Yeah. I robot. You don't have to figure out who the robots are. I haven't seen I robot. Oh, <laughs> okay. Well, if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. Um, Futurama. I know which ones are robots. The Jetsons. Star Wars. The Jetsons. <laughs> the Jetsons is a good example. <laughs> Dexter's lab. I know which ones are robots. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how they grow food. I was a little stuck on that. They kept like drinking alcohol and I was like, what you got from the distilling of what grains that are growing where? How are you getting this stuff? Here's a question. When Harrison, Harrison Ford in like an Indiana Jones movie or in a Star Wars movie or in this, he's always like getting punched in the face, right? Mm -hmm. He's not... His thing isn't that he's Henry Cavill, like I'm super he's strong not man who block I'm always the punching. Punch. No, he's getting hit a lot and yeah. he's kind of getting back up. It's kind of one of his things. I can never tell how hurt he really is. His his bleed always bleeding from the lip. Is he spitting out a tooth? And then but he's kind of then fine. Mm-hmm. He never seems to get like his his fingers were broken. The guy snapped his fingers and then he still used them to climb, do like an inverted climb up the edge of a building and like hold on things by his fingertips. I don't understand that. He's too good at being in pain. He's a high pain tolerance. Harrison Ford. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. All of his characters have a high pain tolerance. I would bet that Harrison Ford at one point had a high pain tolerance too, like himself. I'm sure. Like I've heard stories of him getting injured on set and stuff like that. He was a carpenter. uh, Yeah. Like Jesus. Probably so. He bounces back pretty quickly. So there's a lot of Harrison Ford is tracking people down just by going to addresses and being right. Like he goes to an address and that's officer. where they are. Just goes to an address, that's where they are. Yeah. And then he, I don't understand, he's enhancing the photo and then he sees a picture of a woman. 
And does that ever come up again? He shows people that picture. I think the woman is the first replicant that he kills. Is the snake woman. Yeah. I think so. But I'm not. Sure. I would not bet on it at all. I don't know. And then he gets his real lead when he takes some weird fish scale to a ramen place and the lady microscopes it and is like, Oh no, here's the serial number. Go to Bob's house. He makes snakes. Yeah. Animals are real, but they're, they're clearly very real, but they're also not. They're synthetic versions of those animals. Created. Yeah. And that's just a thing that's happening. Yeah. Where did all the animals go? There's no sunlight. Of course there can't be animals. Why can there there be humans? Because they must be piping it in from the other planets. It's convenient that that soil is able to grow corn and wheat and stuff. There are just too many questions in this movie. I honestly, I have some questions. Like to enjoy it. So he tracks her down using the scales. He pretends to be from something else. Uses a weird voice. Which was very weird. So weird. Belt chokes him or something. Yeah. She wants him to dry her off. Also, we get nudity in this scene. And I'm like, it's not that much. It's pretty brief. But I also didn't need it at all. Like, he did not add. Because right. he comes in talking about exploit. I, I assume it's because he was talking about exploitation. They were just trying to emphasize, like, she's in this rough spot and as, like, an exotic dancer or whatever. She puts a belt around him and then sprints away. And that was kind of a cool scene where he's running, you know, down the street. Mm-hmm. And he's holding onto the edges of buses he's looking for. He almost fired, like, through a bus, at, when, two like, bus windows into at Into a her. bunch of people. A bunch of people. Yeah. He was willing to pull that trigger at a, like, with the tiniest window. At this woman. He eventually gets her and has to shoot her like eight times. So many times. And then immediately Leon tackles him. Mm -hmm. How did Leon know that he was going to be there? I think maybe Leon was just going to see his girlfriend. Interesting. Do you think that they had like walkie talkies or something? I think that they knew each other and knew where they were going to be at a certain time. So he could have been on his way to the club. It was the end of her shift. Yeah. Gotcha. Movies from the 80s that are set in the future do a really poor job of realizing that we're all going to have cell phones. Somehow that was not something we could predict. Right, but we have flying cars. I yeah. don't understand that like at all. Star Wars doesn't really have cell phones. Yeah. Like the communication, interstellar communication is so bad. Yeah, it, it, all, it was it flying cars, flying cars, flying cars. But they had car phones by the mid 80s. Yeah. The technology you wasn't would that think far that off. It would have been the natu- a natural yeah. progression of... The communication devices. People say that's why they still set films back in the 70s and 80s a lot is because once you get cell phones involved and communication can just be constant and instant between any given two people, it makes it harder to have a communication conflict. And and that's often the crux of I find that very interesting because in real life, the communication conflict is still a very big factor. But you every time would be like, um, they had cell phones. Why didn't she just text him the address so that he wouldn't walk in on her kissing this other guy holding her hand or whatever it is. Yeah, for sure. People would point it out every time, I think. For sure. Yeah. So you got to put it in either the past or there's been an EMP or something. Anyway, we're just talking about these because, like, I don't really know what to say about this movie. Harrison Ford, I think, does a good job of being Harrison Ford and brooding and, you know, wanting to bring justice to people. But it's very dark and the pacing is, like, wonky. The pacing some was scenes, horrible. There's some long scenes where they are, like, talking very slowly to each other and then there's nothing. Then someone will walk out the door. Like when they're when he's questioning Rachel, the yeah. assistant, the good, rep, the nice replicant who the, saves his life when Leon's punching one him. we don't realize is a replicant until mm-hmm. they tell us. Yeah, we're supposed to realize that it has been a hundred questions in Correct. before he finds out. Mm-hmm. And I had I would have had no idea that all that time passed. No clue. I like her showing up at his apartment and him having like feeding her these memories that there's no way he could have known if they hadn't yes. been implanted. That but was good. Also very like off feeling. Yeah. I mean, it's cause he's not trying to spare her feelings because she's a replicant. I think yes. is what I'm, what I'm assuming. She's hurt. She's she kind was of hurt. Really good. But too. she doesn't sit down and talk through this with him. She just goes <laughs> and runs away yeah. while he's getting a drink. And you're like, okay, I don't, uh, whatever. Why do they even well, have to eat? What are replicants? He didn't even. Are they just synthetic people? I don't know the answer to any of that. I don't either. 
I, but if they're, if they don't have a lot of feelings, oh, and he was the one guy said to make them develop their own feelings. We gave them memories. Yep. So was, I think there was a prototype thing. I think she's one of the only ones they did that with. I, I agree. I just think it was very it weird. More he's questions telling he her yeah. about these memories yeah. and he's telling her you're a replicant. And then he like backtracks it. Like, just kidding. Right. And like, was that because he wanted to, he wanted to get with her? I don't know. But how do you he realize he made her sad? Who would you, what are you expecting to come out of that? I didn't like that at all. Like, I didn't understand it. And I don't know why they have a connection at all. Because then later, I mean, we have to talk about she it. She saves his life. Fine. And okay. then she tries to leave and he yeah. won't let her. Yeah. And says, tell me you want me. In a very creepy way. Tell me to put my hands on you. Tell me to kiss you. Yeah. What are we do- That doesn't come back again. No. And then they leave together at the end. So this, this all has, like, I want to read the book now because this has to be better explained. There has to be motivation for all of this stuff in the book. It didn't make any sense. I agree. He lets her leave. Like someone's going to track you down eventually. And that, that's it. But I won't that. because but you I saved won't. my life. Right. I owe you one, but I don't owe you one enough not to rape you. Yeah. That's insane. That's psychopath behavior. Yes. So I don't know. We get a lot of creepy geneticist who doesn't have any friends. So he makes a bunch of dolls. That are, the one that are people guy when they're sitting at the table the nose, that looks like a guy. Nose, yeah, there's several that look like full people. Yeah, but never say anything. But he, and, and he they all kind of just scared eh, eh. too. Yes. So I don't know what that was about. There's more to that story. That was a that little we creepy. Did not get. I like that they went back to that location a couple of times. They did a good job of it wasn't like every single scene we get to is a brand new location. I like to stay in location a little bit or come back to it. I feel like I recognize it. I'm not. Worrying about recognizing a new location. Yeah. I was like, oh, good. They came back to the puppet place. Wrong. They're just going to fight through all these other rooms in his apartment building that you've never seen. And drop you off the. Yeah. The roof. Yeah. Yeah. So what's this movie about? Yeah, I don't know at all. I have some theories if you want to hear them. Yes, I do. Please do tell. I think part of this is that I just like writing sentences like this. I like to think that I'm good at saying sentences that are like this, but we'll see. This movie is about the dangers slash end game slash moral implications of artificial intelligence. Always. That's an easy one. That's an easy one. This movie is about the inevitability of death. That's an interesting one, but also true. Inevitability slash evitability. The interplay between technology and immortality slash. The guy literally says it at the end. It's a shame she won't live. But then again, who does? Yeah. Or something like that. I'm, I'm so probably. Something to do with mortality. Yeah. Um, what happens when giant tech corporations get too giant? Yes. It's a, it's, un, it's an underlying, it's part of the backstory, but I don't think it's like a full theme. Um, future tech dystopia. That's, it's That's always more of a that. setting than yeah. it is a theme. That was what all I came up with. Do you have anything to add for what's this movie about? No, I like what you said about death is inevitable kind of thing. Yeah. And I, I think the other thing to consider is what makes you human which is always something you're going nice. to talk about when you talk about AI. The definition of humanity. Yeah. Sure. And it makes me think of it a little bit, but there are other movies that make me think of it that yeah. do a better job. Okay. So, yeah. Did you have empathy for the replicants at any point? Um, I had empathy for the Rachel replicant. Sure. Because I The other I ones knew they were this, replicants, and she kind of didn't. Yeah, she didn't. And that's worse. And it's like everything in her head... That she thought she knew 100% was a lie or was a complete misperception of what maybe actually happened, which was it didn't happen at all. And my empathy is for how devastating it could be to realize that you can't trust your own memories Mm -hmm. and or perception of events yeah there's people that kind of struggle with that in real life that talk about like like what if we the world you know started last thursday and all of my memories were just implanted into me at that time like i don't know i don't yeah i mean i guess (laughs) as a realistic viewpoint i mean i don't i think that is sort of like a way deeper but if we take it back just a little bit I can have a complete conversation with Jeremy and think that I said something and I didn't say it. Mm. Mm. And I, you, Rachel, pause, pause podcast right here. Star it marked on the timestamp. Cause this happens all the time in the Merriman household. <laughs> and it's not just me. I mean, yeah. other people do yeah. it too, 
But if that were to consistently happen. You start questioning your own sanity. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a total like, I mean, the basis on which the whole gaslighting concept is created. But you know what I mean? That is very, it can be very scary, I think. And that's like the little string of empathy that ties it to it. The ties so that thought process that. to the right. I mean, I think Rachel you character. feel bad a little bit anytime you're like, hey, you're going the maximum you can live. You're a fully sentient person and you're doing fine. You will die. Yeah. Four years from today. Like that's 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 kind of tough. If they once they know that that point end point exists, which I think we're supposed to kind of surmise is the breaking point for these guys. Yeah. They discover that we are. What's it called? Planned obsolescence. Mm-hmm. And that that's going to happen. And they explained it a little bit early on where Dr. Terrell said that they did that because their emotions start to like run too high and they can't be like controlled as easily at a certain point. So they put the cap in there. And I, then he says a thing about you burn too bright. Which really seemed patronizing. But I also liked that little blurb where they're talking about it. The scientific Mm -hmm. possibilities to create more life for them to live longer. And the doctor's like, we tried that and this is what happened. We tried this and this is what happened. So I I wasn't sure if he was acting, if he was just trying to give excuses or not. I wasn't clear to me. Oh, I didn't even take that. Well, I didn't mention the four year cap before. I think he would have wanted to see how, how far he could go. He seemed like a guy who would push the boundaries however he could. Yeah. Because he created, Rachel, I mean, I'm assuming, right? So yeah. I didn't think that he was lying, but I did find that conversation very interesting because it's like, we did look into it and this is what we came up with. And sometimes, sometimes you do the base work and this is what you end up with. Yeah. You do the experiments. It's just, yeah, it's it's hard for a clone to accept that it's possible to clone him and make him as awesome as he was, but not possible to do it for more than four years. He's yeah. like, really? There's a line and it's right there and that's just hard and fast and that's the laws of physics and it's tough to, Which tough makes to wrap his sense clone that mind around. That, I mean, it would make sense that it's hard to wrap your mind around, Yeah, but then you've got the doctor saying, look, I've done this and, and the clone is smart enough to understand it. Yeah, because they're going boom back and yeah. forth for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I guess if you're going to bring them into life at like a physical age of 22 or whatever, like kind of the physical prime, if they're going to be doing labor and things like that, and you're going to make them five times stronger than a regular person, it, it, you're sort of overclocking the body that that's in maybe four years about all you can get out of it. It's like in Star Wars when the clones have a rapid aging process so they yes. can get up to fighting speed, but that means they die much sooner as well, you know? Which I do think is interesting that you're doing all of this alteration to make this replicant. But the only way you can tell them apart is by answering these statements or reacting to these statements and their eyes. Yeah. Like if you're, if you're making them five times stronger than they, you just take a blood sample and pop it in and be like synthetic, synthetic, synthetic. Like it can't be that hard. Right. Exactly. Then you, I guess you're, it's compulsory blood donations by every person to prove whether or not you're a replicant, but it seems to be the least of our worries. Harrison I mean, Ford's just running through the street shooting anyway. stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of shooting on site. Yeah. Have you ever um, retired on a human on accident? No. Which is very creepy. How yeah. about when she asks, so here's the question I've got for you. Okay. Have you ever taken the test yourself? Oh, I didn't even hear her ask that. I missed Rachel that. Rachel asks that mm-hmm. to Deckard, Harrison Ford. Interesting. So I feel like swirling around is this opinion and I Googled it a little bit. I really, really think hard. Yeah. And they're in the director's cut of the movie. This is what I Googled. They said he was definitely a replicant. Harrison Ford was? Yeah. Wow. But in the theatrical cut, they made it more like you kind of figure it out on your own. But he definitely feels pain. Yeah, for sure. So. Or does he? It, I don't know. It seems like he does. I don't know. It seems I mean, like he did when they broke his to, fingers, yeah. but then he climbed up the thing like you were saying. Yeah. He's always fishing through in his mouth to get like the blood out and stuff. Yeah. Maybe. Not. Yeah, I guess maybe. I didn't see that at all, though. I did not. I didn't even cross my mind. There were no signs in this movie, mm-hmm. in the film that we watched, yeah. that he might be a replicant. Yeah. So Blade Runner, 
the 1981 ver- 82 version, not something you would be excited to go back to. No. And in fact, I probably won't watch the sequel now that we've talked about this. Like, Interesting. I, I would might- give it a chance. I would, mostly because it's directed by Denis Villeneuve, who, who directed the Dune movies. And another one, he's like visually is like a very interesting filmmaker. So I wonder what he would do with the darkness. I would, I would try it because it's got Ryan Gosling, Ryan Gosling and Harrison mm-hmm. Ford in it. So I wouldn't be opposed. I Who would, I, like? I would watch this again if I was with someone that was like, no, 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 no. You don't understand. Here's I'm a big Blade Runner so guy. You're missing this and this yeah. and this. Like I could be, if it was the right person, I could be talked into it, but I wouldn't be excited for any other reason than that. I don't think. I agree. I agree. I'm very disappointed that I didn't like it. I was so ready to like it. Yeah. I came in ready after Ghostbusters last night. I was ready. Yeah. We're going to have to pick like it. a really good movie that we're both going to like we next time. I know. We just I know. went with Ghostbusters <laughs> and Blade Runner. Which are like movies that people love. Okay. So Godfather next. <laughs> I, I will try it. This is the thing. I feel like some of these movies, I've never watched Godfather but it's referenced so much yeah. that I feel like I'm missing out. Did you, did you, I noted one line in this movie that I, I hear referenced all the time. Nope. I don't know it. Tears and rain, like tears and rain. At the nope. very end, you've never heard someone say that? Huh? Oh, okay. That was the one takeaway that I had. That was a, I don't hear replicants. I don't hear people say that. No. I don't hear people say Blade Runner. I've maybe heard people talk about it being dark. I mean, it's just, it's kind of like maybe the, one of the prototypical dystopian future movies. They're always dark and grungy and. Yeah, but which ones come before 1982? Yeah, nothing. I don't know. So. If you have thoughts on Blade Runner, if you know more about it than we do, if you've read the novel by Philip K. Dick, if there's anything that you, if you want to question whether or not I am a replicant, we would encourage you to either uh, follow us on social at Flabberpod, um, like and subscribe, subscribe, and subscribe, resubscribe, five stars, or uh, give us a call or text at our hotline, which is 240-668-4376. Two four zero movie seven six. Two four zero movie seventy six. Yeah. If you have a suggestion, which is kind of funny, because really, just tell me what your favorite movie is, and I'll tell you if I've seen it or not. And if I have, then we can't do it. But I mean, if you if you have a suggestion that yeah. seems like some, I mean, any suggest a rom com or like an animated movie, most of which I have probably not seen. I think doing like a hardcore comedy, like Dumb and Dumber. I haven't seen Dumb and Dumber. An Adam Sandler movie. A bunch of my students want me to do Kung Fu Panda. Which is a movie I've not seen. Jack Black. Yeah. Not seen School of Rock. You haven't seen School of Rock? Mm-mm. Okay, we should do that one. Okay. That's a, it's a really fun one. At least we can guarantee that one person will be glad that, I'm not saying I won't, but for sure we'll have one person that did like it. So. Yeah, School of Rock will be fun. Um, for Jess, I am Rogie. We're signing off and we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye. Bye.